Welcome back guys. I have got a lot of questions lately about spot welding. Today I'm going to show you a little bit behind how I actually work with the spot welders and then we talk a little bit about some tips and tricks that could be very useful for you guys. And if you haven't seen my other videos, do feel free to check them out. I will have a link up here that goes to a playlist about my spot welding stuff. Spot welding as such in many terms can be for many different occasions or situations. In our case here we are going to talk about spot welding your 18650 cells. And basically the normal way to spot weld is to spot weld this type here, the nickel strips that you can get off eBay and many other places. Just watch out for the fake stuff. Also before you do the spot welding, just make sure that the nickel strip that you bought is actually thick enough for your application. Down below I will have link to how to check that out. Note that I also have links for every gear that I'm using today if you want to buy anything and sponsor my channel. Many of us also started to spot weld fuse wire. I did an early video a couple of months back and if you haven't checked out that video yet please feel free to do that and that may help you on a way of getting your cells together rather fast. Spot welding nickel strips and spot welding fuse wire is very very different and that can be very very tricky to actually get that going. So today we are going to talk a little bit about best practices when spot welding. So guys, let's talk a little bit about spot welding. How does spot welding work? You have the two pieces of metal here that you want to join together with a weld. And to do that you often add one electrode on each side like this. When adding the electrodes here, the idea behind it is that the current flowing from one electrode to the other should, in the middle here, create such a heated area that the both metal pieces actually goes together or actually welds themselves together. But to do this is very important to have a good contact, so you need to apply a firm pressure on both electrodes to get them together. So that's the basic of spot welding. There's a lot of things to think about when doing this, but let's head on to the battery. So let's say you have the battery here. If we want to spot weld a nickel strip to it. If we apply this scenario here and have one electrode on the positive and one electrode above here, you will destroy your battery. Because you cannot send a current through the battery and think that this would actually spot weld it together. So what we are doing here is actually having one electrode on that side and one electrode on that side. And one thing to note about this is that the current will take the easiest way. If you just add this on top of the nickel strip, the current will just flow like this. And what that will end up with is the nickel strip burning off or heating up without actually going into the battery. So that's why it's so important to have a very very firm pressure on your electrodes to make sure that the nickel strip actually goes down to the battery because then the current will actually flow like this instead. And here is another thing that you need to understand as well. If the distance between the electrodes is too short it will take that route and if you have a little bit further away it will actually penetrate a little bit better down to the battery shell. So many people actually do one mistake by actually having the electrodes too close to each other. On the other hand, you can't have them too far apart either because then you will lose current in the resistance of the battery shell and in the nickel strip. If we take a look at the handle that I'm using for my current scenario here, you can see that the tips are very very close to each other. And if I press on the tips you also see that they are spring loaded. And this is basically essential for this to work properly when you are working with the batteries. Because you need even pressure and you need to have the distance correct. But as you can see this actually can change the width. And this is an important thing because many people use it like this and you have a distance this is less than half a millimeter and this may work on some occasions but I do recommend to have at least one and a half two millimeters wide between each other when doing the spot weld. So I tend to put something in between here to make sure that this is always is even. And this is very important when doing it on the actual wire itself and I will draw up why. So if you have your top cell here and you want to add a very very thin thread to this 
and you put your spot wells very close like this the current will travel very very close to each other and you may only burn a hole in the cell instead so if you take your electrode here and put it a little bit further away you will get a lot better contact point for the actual uh, fuse wire itself if this is scientific I don't know but this is my experience so far working with it. that when you're positioning your electrodes don't do it on an angle because if you do it on an angle and you heat up the surface they will glide on the side and that will cause a very very strange welding point you always need to have it 90 degrees upwards down so you make sure that you have very very firm pressure down into the cell and when doing the nickel strips there is another consideration to think about as well actually for the the fuse wire also and that's the small tabs that you have on your cells if we take a closer look you will see that those tabs actually sticks up a little bit and make sure that you remove as much as possible because when adding the nickel strip if you don't have a good contact here the actual bot weld may not get contact to the cell properly especially on this one here where you can see that this part sticking up on the clean one this will work just fine so when doing nickel strips you need to pay a little bit more attention to actually doing that. Welding nickel strips always make sure that you do proper spot welds. I like to do at least two times or even three times to make sure that they stick. When doing the fuse wire this is not as important because you can easily position the fuse wire at the side of the tabs that are left. So I don't care about the tabs for the fuse wire. The pressure on the cells is another thing that is very very important as I said before. But this, I may get the question, yeah, but how hard should I press to do it? You should not have to struggle to get it down. That's the thing. You should have a gentle pressure, I would say somewhere around 250 to 500 grams, half a kilo at most. You should not press that hard that you make a dent into the cell, because if you do that, it won't work. For this special electrode holder here, you should press so it actually goes down, just slightly into it and this is done by springs so you shouldn't press all the way but just slightly as you can see here I pressed in a couple of millimeters so when talking about spot welding you can do it in many different ways and I have two ways in front of you here this is actually my first spot welder that I did build several years ago and this was a long time ago this one has been working great for what I have been using it for and it's like two uh, turns around with three six square millimeter wires and was what I had during that time but that's not today's topic if you want to see me build a cheap as 18650 spot welder that actually do work let me know down in the comments but currently we are going to take a little bit of a comparison between the one bought on eBay comparing to this one and what this one actually does it's important to understand that you cannot really limit the current on a transformer based um, system that is simple like this one here. And this bought one from eBay is actually the same type inside. It used this transformer and instead it's actually limiting the current or the actual heat or energy transferred by the time it's on. You have the panel here on this welder machine and you can see there are a couple of things that you can set and it even says set current but that's generally not what you're doing you're actually setting the time of the pulses and here you can set the number of pulses that you want to be sent out to the electrodes so this one here sets the time between the pulses and this sets the number of pulses so we have two things that you can set on this uh, spot welder and that is the current and what you do when you set the current if you have the pulse here and this is when it is on and this is when it is off so basically what you set on that knob is the time how long the actual current or how long or uh, the actual output will be on I'm not going to go into detail how this looks, but this is basically the idea behind it. This is the signal it sends out for go sending current through. The other one that you set is the pulse. And that's basically how many of those 
in row are you going to send out? So if you press on the 4P, this is kind of what you get. This is very very simple guys, so, so bear with me, this, this is different on every pulse or spot welder that you can buy in different brands and stuff. But this is a general idea on how you can limit or make sure that the spot weld you do actually works. So, when you are setting your system up, you need to set this one here and you need to set this one here to get the current or a proper actual weld. And in many cases you need to mix them. You cannot just go full out on this one and max this one out and then step this one up. So let's start to take a look at this machine then. We will start somewhere in the middle. Let's say we're going four and a half and we leave the pulses out. So if we have this here, if I press the pedal now you will hear the sound. Most likely hear the click. I have some space between and I push it And it sticks just tiny, tiny, tiny little bit. So let's take a closer look at it. And as you can see, it has some indents from me pressing. So let's go down to, let's say, five and a half. And we will start to add up the pulses instead. So let's start, start with the four pulses at five and a half. And we try again. So let's try to loosen it up. And it actually sticks a little bit better. So let's go up to 4 plus 6 pulses. And you can hear that this machine actually does it a little bit longer. In the beginning it did. So that's the difference. So let's see what it sticks. And it sticks a lot harder. It's actually up to the same thickness as when we were running. See, up 1 pulse and at 8. So that's for fun, go up to 6, and we run to 6, and 4 plus 6 pulses. Firm pressure, and here we start to see something that we didn't see before. You can see that it actually colored it a little bit, and that means it started to burn through as I want it. And it sticks like crazy. It's still not good enough because it doesn't actually break loose any piece at all so it should be a little bit harder so let's do it again and we remove the 4 pulse and add the 8 pulse so let's see what this does still firm pressure and as you have seen so far no sparks so smoke came out and we take a look at it as you can see, the spot where it's safe looks rather good, a little bit burn mark, let's remove it. And I hardly can't remove it. I actually can't remove it. Yeah, I got it removed. <laughs> so that one actually did stick very very good. And no damage on the battery itself, so that's promising. So now we actually have gotten this to work as we want. So just it's now time to relieve this one here, because I mean, this one is simple to do. The tricky part is when it comes to actually doing the fuse wire. Because the fuse wire is so damn tiny. How do you get that on there? Let's say, I mean, we are running rather high now. What will happen if we run that high on this fuse wire? So let me demonstrate. I will pull this apart a little bit, because as I said, it will give a better function. And firm pressure, and I don't want to look. <coughs> So the fuse wire just burned off, and you have these major marks on the cell. It was so close to actually burning through the cell. Let's turn this down, 4 plus 6, 5 and a half. We take the fuse wire again. We make sure we have some distance between the probes, because that will make it a lot easier. And you press it. And it sits. One important thing to work with when you are doing this kind of work is that you need to make sure that the tips here are rather clean. Because if you too, get too much residue on them, you will get a lot of sparks. Especially when working with this thin fuse wire, it could help if the tips itself aren't too round. 
if they just are a slightly little bit flattened and they will become that over the time it will work a lot better you could even make a very very small groove so guys I hope you enjoyed this video today we took a look at a little bit on how you can actually spot well your fuse wire to your cells and also the nickel strips and especially we looked a little bit into the best practices that, that I have learned so far it's important to actually get the correct pressure against the cells or the nickel tabs or whatever you are spot welding it's also very important that you actually use the correct current and settings uh, it's not e that hard to actually try this out just grab a bunch of secondhand cells or cells that you're going through away and go ahead test if you get sparks that's generally due to a little to less contact or contact surface or you have the electrodes actually not clean enough so just make sure that's the case and it will all go well and if you haven't subscribed to my channel already please don't forget to do that once again guys thank you for watching and see you next time bye